physicians aren't very good patients, I don't think. And I'm not a very good patient. If I go to the dentist, I don't want to know. Just do, if you don't take out my teeth, take them out. I don't know anything about dentistry. Uh, but that's the wrong approach. Because the patient informed consent is so important. And I think when I first meet a patient, it's one, my name's Steve Beck. And sit down and say, okay, let's, let's talk. You have to walk out of this room knowing exactly what's going on with your cancer or whatever problem it is and why. And I said, if you ask why, that's the best question. And if you say you want a second opinion, and if the doctor says no, go to a different doctor. Because second opinions, it's great if somebody can go to a different urologist and they say, yeah, I, I agree with Steve. That's absolutely right. Because usually we should be agree on everything. And uh, like for bladder cancer, you can say, why are we doing this? Because if we don't, this will happen. And I think just getting comfortable and just say, you ask whatever questions you want. And then if you go home, you have a question, Call my office, we'll talk on the telephone. And just know why are we doing every step of the road? Why are we repeating the CAT scan? There's gotta be a reason. Why are you gonna be in the hospital a week versus three days? There's gotta be a reason. Why are we recommending chemotherapy? There's gotta be a reason. So I want them, patients, to become some of an expert on their own disease process. They should know the staging system, not rocket science. So let's go through the staging system. And I say, okay, if you're stage one, we do this. If you're two, you do this. If you're three and four, these are different treatment options for each stage. Now, where are you? So I go through an overview of whatever cancer it is, then plug in their individual stats, so to speak. You know, this is how we treat bladder cancer, different stages, and you're this, so therefore we're doing that. I, I think it's important that patients feel very, very comfortable, and sometimes it's the family that you can focus on. You can always, it seems to me, my experience there's usually a family member that kind of connects and you find that person and that's who I really focus with too as long and even after surgery if depending on the pathology I talk to them first and say listen this is what I want you to know because we all have the same goal which is to get the patient out safely or do what's right but sometimes pathology is bad doesn't mean you give up but you got to switch gears and fight a different way but sometimes getting kind of that leader involved who they can kind of absorb the information a little bit better, and then they can kind of slowly tell the patient. And I do that too, but I think it's, it's working together with everybody, not just the patient. I think the family members are very important because they're there to support, you know, their family member. And a lot of the patients are like, you know, I'm strong, I can do all these things. Yeah, you can, but we're gonna make you weak with surgery or with chemotherapy, and your family's here to support you, so let them.